Well, let's have a look at this expression. It's not really used in our textbook so much as other texts, but it says corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Nice acronym, CPCTC. This is how we use it. Let's suppose I've got these tick marks on these two triangles. You would tell me, you'd say, aha, uh -huh, those triangles are congruent by side angle side. But once I know that the triangles are congruent, we remember from the second section, doesn't that mean that all their corresponding parts are? Of course they are. So you would say, by CPCTC, I can conclude that angle B is congruent to angle E, BC is congruent to EF, and angle C is congruent to angle F. Let's do some samples from the book. Well, here's our first exercise using this expression, corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. We're going to prove that these two angles are congruent from the diagram. And of course, we're looking for congruent triangles. We need another piece. There's the piece right there. They're both using side BC, which is congruent to itself by the reflexive property. Therefore, this triangle is congruent to this triangle. And we can see their reflections of each other congruent by side, side, side. Therefore, each of their corresponding parts, the green angles, the blue angles, and the red angles are congruent. These are the pieces we're looking for. As I want to prove that angle A is congruent to D, and I can say they are. Those two angles are congruent since the two triangles, ABC and triangle DBC, are congruent by side, side, side. Therefore, all their corresponding parts, in this case angles A and D, are congruent. Well, let's take this familiar diagram and make some triangles. First thing we've got right here is a pair of vertical angles, and that's going to lead to congruent triangles by side angle side. And you can see it right there, side angle side. You got a side, an angle, and a side. And we can see clearly these are rotations of each other. So if we were to consider the corresponding parts of congruent triangles, I could then say that um, these two triangles are congruent by again by side angle side, and the result, since they are congruent, all their corresponding parts, in this case, angle Q and angle T are congruent. Well, you should be getting the hang of it by now. I'm trying to make these two segments congruent, and we're going to do that by first finding congruent triangles. So um, I'm looking at two potential triangles. I need an extra piece, and there it is. These two triangles both use the same side, and therefore this triangle, reflection of this one, just like that. So I can see that I have a pair of congruent triangles, and by the corresponding parts of congruent triangles, all their pieces must match as well. And I would state it this way. The two triangles are congruent by hypotenuse leg, and therefore the two sides, the remaining sides, JM and LM, are congruent. Now, here we go again, proving that these two pieces, AC and BD, are congruent components of two triangles I see. We're looking for a pair of congruent triangles. They're staring right at us. We've got these parallel lines. That's a big hint. And this is a transversal. This is going to get us started. And I do have angle B marked congruent to angle C. Now this is like doing speed proofs. A lot of fun. Saving that two column form. So these two green angles are congruent. They're the alternate interior angles. Remember this is your transversal. So if they're congruent and our good friend the reflexive property shows up. Look at these angles. I've got angle, angle, side for this triangle, and over here, angle, angle, side. And that would be my guess. Take those two angles. I can see, and I can see too, that they are rotations of each other. And therefore, well, they're congruent by angle, angle, side, and What's the punchline? Well, then all their corresponding parts, in this case, AC congruent to BD, are congruent. So let's write it up the way your teacher wants. And you're going to say, 
that these two triangles are congruent. Make sure you get the vertices in the right order. And the reason, of course, angle, angle, side. And therefore, they're, each of their components, in this case, AC and BD, are congruent. Well, we got an easy one here. And again, the pattern is we're looking for a pair of, or, or pair of congruent triangles. Say that three times fast. This one and this one, right there. Look like reflections to me. I'm even going to draw in for you the axis of reflection. Okay, and these two triangles are already congruent. Look at this triangle. I've got the got angle, angle, side. And then I've got this triangle with their same parts, angle, angle, side. These two triangles are already congruent by angle, angle, side. And as we can see, they are reflections of each other. So now, once we know two triangles are congruent, all their corresponding parts are congruent, and these are their parts. Remember, HJ and GK are parts of the triangle. They do overlap, so be careful. And if I wrote it out, I would just write it like this. The two triangles are congruent by angle, angle, side, and therefore, this segment, GK, is congruent to this segment, HJ. And that's by corresponding parts. Well, they just keep getting easier. I see a pair of triangles that are already congruent. So let's just have a look at them. This triangle, do you see those two? They're going to be congruent by angle, angle, side. And once they're congruent, then I can say that all their corresponding parts are congruent. So if I wrote it up, I'd say this. The two triangles are congruent by angle, angle, side, and therefore QW is congruent to TV by corresponding triangles. All right, let's write a plan for proof. No different than what we've been doing. We want to prove that angle S is congruent to angle U, and clearly we're going to do it with a pair of triangles. If I can make this triangle congruent to its rotation, then I'm there. And I can see right away these two triangles are congruent by side, side, side. And you're saying, well, I see the two tick marks, of course. Well, where's the third side is, of course, VT is congruent to itself by the reflexive property. I'm taking a little shortcut with you there. So right there, side, 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 because you've got the two sides. And again, this side is common to both triangles. Once those um, triangles are congruent, then all their corresponding parts are congruent. And that's it. Well, write a plan for proof. We're always doing that. You can see right here, I've got a pair of vertical angles that are congruent. Well, we know vertical angles are congruent. Theorem 2.6. Therefore, I've got a pair of congruent triangles by angle, angle, side. If it helps you to visualize, you can see that these two triangles are reflections of each other. Angle, angle, side. Once the triangles are congruent, then we can definitely say all their corresponding parts are congruent. And we're done. Therefore, see these and this. Corresponding parts. Congruent. Well, here's an interesting question. Why are these two segments congruent? They connect. Well, corresponding vertices of congruent pentagons. So let's have a look at this. Well, it might help if we first orient them in the same direction. So I'm going to start by saying these two pentagons are congruent. So if I do something to one, it does it to the other. Makes sense to me. Now, they're not regular, they don't have to be, but they're congruent. So this is what I know about congruent pentagons. Since these are corresponding sides, they're congruent, and these two are congruent. They're not congruent to each other, but that's what we've got. So, what does that give us? Well, it also gives us this. This angle, the two red angles are congruent because they're corresponding parts of the congruent pentagons. And if I look at this now, I could conclude that the two triangles are congruent by side angle side, and therefore these segments are congruent 
by corresponding parts of congruent triangles.